Matthew chapter 17. You're reading through the Gospel of Matthew with me. You'll know that we're in Matthew chapter 17. I've taken this particular translation from the message. Now keep in mind last week, well actually the week before, we were doing transfiguration. Jesus transfigured before them, his clothes bright as lightning. Moses and Elijah are there. Now remember, when Moses came down from the mountaintop with the Ten Commandments, what did he find? The people of God in rebellion. They had created a golden calf, and now they are worshiping the golden calf. Moses reacts to this by taking the two tablets of stone and throwing them at the people. Remember that? Christ, having just had conversation with Moses, and Elijah comes down from the mountaintop. Hear what he encounters. This is from the message translation. At the bottom of the mountain, they were met by a crowd of waiting people. As they approached, a man came out of the crowd. He fell to his knees begging, Master, have mercy on my son. He goes out of his mind and suffers terribly, falling into seizures. Frequently he is pitched into the fire, other times into the river. I brought him to your disciples, but they could do nothing for him. Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? How much longer do I have to put up with this? Bring the boy here. He ordered the afflicting demon out, and it was out, gone. From that moment on, the boy was well. When the disciples had Jesus off to themselves, they asked, why couldn't we throw the demon out? Jesus replied, because you are not taking God seriously. The simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, faith the size of a mustard seed. You could tell this mountain, move! And it would move. How long must I endure you? It is a frustrated Jesus that we see today. Frustrated, which is defined as a feeling of annoyance especially because of an inability to achieve or change something. Discouragement because of unresolved problems or unfulfilled goals, desires, or needs. It's hard for us to imagine a frustrated Jesus. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. That's an easy picture because it's comfortable and It's comforting. Jesus, the good shepherd, patiently bringing the one wandering sheep back into his fold. Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Jesus walking on water. Young boy Jesus in the temple asking and answering questions of the elders, leaving them filled with awe and amazement. These are easy pictures because they bring to mind the power and might of Jesus, his divinity, his authority, his control. He is something larger than we are, greater and mightier, and therefore capable of protecting us and delivering us, especially when we are afraid. Picture an angry Jesus, a Jesus who makes a whip out of cords of rope and begins beating people, driving them away from the house of God. He does this not once but twice. The first time is at the beginning of his ministry. The second time toward the end of his ministry. I challenge you, read John chapter 2 today and Matthew chapter 21 and compare the timeline. Are we uncomfortable with an angry Jesus? Maybe we're not. In so far as that anger is not directed toward us, but at those who deserve it. For they have desecrated the house of God. And certainly you and I would never do anything like that. 
picture a Jesus filled with sorrow. That's easy enough. Jesus weeping at the grave of Lazarus. Jesus weeping at the gates of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, said Jesus at the city gates. Read it for yourself this afternoon. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Read it. And understand why he said what he said. And while we are somewhat uncomfortable with the Jesus filled with sorrow, for we know that we are the source of that sorrow, especially when we live in deliberate sin and opposition to what he said and taught, ultimately we are comforted by his sorrow, for it is the source of our salvation. But a frustrated Jesus is hard for us to picture. I did a search on the internet and found countless paintings and portraits of an angry Jesus, a Jesus filled with sorrow, countless artistic renditions of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, Jesus calming the storm, Jesus feeding the 5,000, but not a single one of a frustrated Jesus causing me to pause and ponder why no one in 2,000 years has ever portrayed Jesus in a state of frustration. O ye of little faith, said a frustrated Jesus Christ. We know that saying well. But I dare say that until today, many, if not most of us, have ever considered the words of Jesus in today's text, how long must I endure you? Or to say it a different way, how long do I have to put up with you? How long until you finally catch on? How long until you finally understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith was a struggle for the disciples, just as it is for us today. For we misunderstand faith. We speak of those who have a strong faith, or a great faith, or a faith that is rock solid, or a faith that is mature. Think about that. Why then does Jesus say, unless you have faith like that of a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven? This past week, I watched my youngest granddaughter jump into her mother's arm, laughing as she did so. She had no fear. She had no trepidation. She had no anxiety. Mama held out her hands and said, jump. And the little girl jumped, laughing as she did so. That, my friends, is trust, which is the root of faith. Faith is never about ourselves. We miss the point when we say, I have faith, because we emphasize ourselves. Faith has an object, a focal point. When my little granddaughter jumped into her mother's arms, it wasn't because she trusted her ability to jump. She trusted that her mother would catch her. And perhaps that's the reason we're so uncomfortable with a frustrated Jesus. Because it reveals not so much a lack of faith, but a lack of trust. After all Jesus had done to reveal and prove his power, authority, and might in the presence of his disciples, no wonder he was frustrated to discover that they still didn't trust him.
Has Christ ever let any of us fall? Has he ever let any of us down? Has he ever gone back on his word? Has he ever walked away from us? Even in our darkest hour. Think on these things, my friends. With that I say, Amen.